the uh, next guide uh, or the continuation of uh, my last one uh, in collection. So uh, here we are in the next city over, or the district rather. Garmacy was the last. Now here we are with the Stuviescent. I don't know if that's accurately how you say it. But what I will do is start from here and work my way around. Like I said, I'm just going for convenience in collecting. So I will start here, boom, 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 right around. I'll probably go to here and, hmm, well, here it gets kind of scattered. Maybe I'll go do these ones, come down to here, and then rush over, hit these last three before I get back up here by the safe house. So again, I will start here, phone, and work my way right around town, get those, and then back to the safe house. So each, each one that I will be collecting, I will show the areas. No commentary during the videos, of course. I will just uh, show you the actual location just like that. I'll put, plot a waypoint, show you the street names, and the intel that I'm going to get. What the disease control department finally told us was scary. This thing, nobody was saying smallpox yet, was virulent at two parts per million. Direct contact airborne contagion too. It was scary. Then the governor declared it an emergency and they locked the city down and we realized what kind of hell we were gonna be in for. The National Guard moved in, but what were they gonna do? They weren't doctors. All I'm saying is that it's time for us to take responsibility and realize that we're neglecting an entire class of citizens here. We're deliberately denying U.S. citizens the medical treatment they deserve. The facilities are beyond capacity and they're sick and dying just the same as we are out here. Well, I think you got your priorities all out of whack, Yvonne, I'm sad to say. You're implying that it's more important for us to put the precious resources we have left, not to our public hospitals and clinics here in the city, but to send them off to take care of murderers and rapists. Is that what you're saying? That's a massive oversimplification of the issue at hand, John. You're really not helping the discussion here. Oh, I'm not. And you're somehow having our best interests in mind. If it were up to me, we'd send the staff home to their families and leave the inmates behind until all this blows over. I can't believe you just said that. Am I wrong? Is that not what most people would say if this was put to a public vote? How about we bring some of our listeners in here? What do you think? Thanks a lot for this. We all got unfinished business. It reminds me of the day that I... <laughs> Readings indicate an echo nearby. A 
Are you listening to me? I brought these people out of the dark zone and we were followed. I tried to hold up in a JTF safe house, but the Rikers out there didn't back off. If you don't pull us out, these people are all dead. Let's leave it, Charlie Vanguard. The dead zone is too hot for extraction. You'll sit tight and wait for their instructions. See you till six out. So that's it? We just wait to die? Not if I can help it. Listen to me. I brought these people out of the dark zone and we were followed. I tried to hold up in a JTF safe house, but the Rikers out there didn't back off. If you don't pull us out, these people are all dead. Let's leave it, Charlie Vanguard. The dead zone is too hot for extraction. You'll sit tight and wait for their instructions. Send until six out. So that's it? We just wait to die? Not if I can help it. But the thing is, the patients kept on coming. I mean, you work ER, you're always ready for a bad night. But this was every day, and it never stopped. More people coming in, same symptoms. You'd see parents shivering next to their kids, with the kids trying to keep it together, and your heart, it, it just broke for them. Three, four days of this? We're pretty sure it's not flu. DCD was calling every couple of hours for updates. And they asked all these questions that made it pretty clear. They didn't think it was flu either.
Appreciate your kindness. Got your message. Thanks. I'm glad. It was quick, I guess. I wish I could have seen her before... Dan. Today I saw these guys on the street, standing around this old man. They wanted his suitcase. They didn't know what was in it, but they wanted it anyway. And he didn't want to give it up. So they knocked him down and started kicking him hard till he passed out. Danny, I was one of them. Get out of town. All right, put the boys in the car, go to the lake, and take Dad's shotgun. The three of you can live there for months. Do it. Danny, before it's too late. And my friends, get your ass back to Brooklyn, hipster. Shane, don't! <laughs> ah! I'm gonna kill you! <laughs> It's Joel. Don't know if these things are getting through. Tell Mom... I love her. Tell her I'll be home soon. Dress it up however you have to. Just, just make sure she believes it. I don't want her lying there thinking. I'm hungry, and Jesus, I'm hungry. I need a fucking pigeon raw if I could catch one. 
the Sierra people were handing out MREs, but they didn't have enough, and people started getting... I didn't, but... You know, I, I can't blame them. Hunger, it gnaws at you. Like your brain's eating itself from the inside out. I lied. Uh, I got rough. Danny, uh, got your voicemail. The cell service is hit and miss these days. Like everything. Power comes and goes. You don't find a, a place to sleep before dark, nobody lets you in. Too afraid you're bringing a disease with you. Those nights, I ended up in a hallway somewhere. They were sleeping in an alley under a cardboard box, like some kind of bum. It's fucking cold in this city, you know? Like, I, I knew it was, but when you can't get away from it, you realize it is a lot colder than you think. Nobody's got spare food. I'm running out of ramen. Don't know what I'm going to do when that happens. Mom's going to be fine, Dano. Yeah, I'm sure it's something else. They left me. They left me. For weeks, I did as I was told. I came to consulate. I did not contact DCD. I stayed hidden while an epidemic raged outside. And I might know better than anyone what is really going on. I hid so well, it seems, that they forgot to tell me of the evacuation. They left. This is a wonderful English phrase. In the dead of the night. I... I have no words. And now I'm here, in the city, under martial law, with no protection. There is only one benefit to this. Now there is no one to tell me I cannot contact DCD and offer my help, or find Dr. Amherst. 
Now I am free. I hope it is not too late. We know them! They're the same under that uniform. Police, parole officers, judges, guards, child motherfucking protection officers. Fancy government agents with their fancy ass watches and these shiny guns prancing around like they fucking guards or something. <laughs> 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 They were going to leave us to starve and die in there. They don't give two shits about our lives. They never have and they never will. We just some trash in their way. They just assume we just blow right away. <laughs> but we're going to be a storm instead. Going to blow them to bits. These parasites in their shiny JTF uniforms, you know them. You've been dealing with them all your life. All look the same on the inside. Well, let's see for ourselves, shall we? <laughs> Stay cool. I got no issue with you.
Dan, you stopped leaving messages. Why'd you stop leaving messages, Dan? I have news. Tons of things to tell you. I'm doing better. Found some folks to hang with. The right crowd. Strength in numbers. We take what we want, who we want, when we want. We eat every single day. Darwin, man. These are my people. We're gonna survive. You're never gonna hear this. It's gonna live on an NSA server somewhere in Nevada, like the nuclear waste they bury in the desert with the cockroaches nothing can kill. Soon we'll all be gone. The cockroaches will rule the earth. Good fucking riddance.